Hello everyone, this is Brother Lee, long time no see. Today we're going to talk about a technique called uh, UV sampling. Recently I've posted some animation and uh, demonstration about knitting on object surface. And the uh, UV sampling is exactly the techniques behind it. In fact, recently Antagama has also discussed this technique in Houdini. And we're just going to do that the same in Blender 3.4. Knowing that I'm going to make several tutorials about this topic. Today, this is just the first tutorial talking about the most basic usage of the node. We're going to investigate as well. And then we will move on to the practical side in the future. So let's start. So here we're in Blender and there are two planes. They are really just the planes with one cut in the middle. But one is deformed, the other has been not. And my goal is basically to make the upper plane to be like the lower plane. Okay, so let's add a geometry node tree and let's lock it. So what we usually do in this scenario is we just put the lower plane into the node tree. And nowadays it's called a sample index because both of them, they're basically the same plane. Okay, exactly the same with the same amount of vertices and so on. Okay. So we basically just the sample index and the transfer the position attribute. And we transfer, uh, we sample by index attribute. I don't know why they didn't put a index attribute in default, but uh, anyway, and then we take a set position and we plug this sampled result into the position. Then we get exactly the same result. Uh, they are not overlapping to each other because the object transform has been elevated for our upper plane. But if you just uh, cancel the location, then they will just be the same. Okay. So this is a normal way that we do that. This way works if these are basically the same geometry. So you can work with shape keys using such kind of technique, but it does not work if you're working with some complex uh, completely different geometry. So here I'm still going to use these two planes, but I'm going to show a different techniques which can be used for more complicated or different geometry. So let's firstly just delete uh, what we had previously. Let's uh, call the node that we are going to use, which is called a sample UV surface. Okay. So knowing that these two objects are the same, which means their UV, their UV map should also be the same. So if I sample UV surface with the position value, so let's take a vector and again take the position, then somehow we should be able to get the results if we start to set the position. Okay. But it's kind of very confusing. What's the mesh? What's the value? What's the source UV map? What's the sample UV? Sometimes it's a little bit confusing. We always have this kind of problem. And it's possible that you read the menu, but sometimes you are still not very clear. So we're going to investigate this note by experimenting here. Okay, so they both have a UV map. I'm just going to call the upper plane as the, let's call the lower plane as UV so that we distinguish them. Okay, and uh, what's the mesh that we're going to sample? It's the lower plane. So we take the lower plane into the object info. Uh, probably I should have just uh, renamed it lower and upper so it becomes much more clear. Okay, so we take the lower plane because it's the target that we're going to sample the information and you put the geometry into the mesh and the source. So I, I, I it's really difficult to discuss really what's the source UV map, what's the sample UV map. So that's why we're trying to ex uh, or trying to experiment. So let's take a named attribute because whichever way that you are going to get an UV map, you still have to use the name attribute. So you just try. So let's, for example, let's just type UV map and then the other is UV. And then let's see if it works. And we put a position and we found that our object has been disappeared. It means it's actually outputting zero. We can check this with the spreadsheet and you will find the position is 0, 0, 0, which means uh, this entire node tree is invalid. There is nothing being input inside. So let's switch these two 
and then we recovered everything, which means the source UV map should come from lower, which means the mesh that we're sampling. And the sample UV actually means the original UV for our upper object. It's a little bit confusing, but if you think about it, it will finally make sense. I don't like this part, but that's how it works. So after we studied the basic usage of this sample UV surface node, we're going to do some more complicated practice with this node. Okay. Knowing that UV space is basically a 2D plane starting from 0, 0 to 1, 1. And you can see that in the UV editing page, uh, if you go to the edit mode, then you can see this is where we are getting. Of course, you can edit that to make it range larger or the smaller. As you can see, the deformation has been different. But uh, usually we consider that just as from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Okay. And uh, we can basically map anything which occupies such a kind of coordinate with this sample UV surface as discussed by Intagma. So we're going to start with a different object. Instead of a plane, probably I will start with a circle. Uh, yes, I think a circle. Let's start with a plane, which is probably the easiest. And uh, we're going to just uh, fill that with a triangular fine. And uh, probably just a subdivide. Uh, it does not really work. So let's just uh, add a loop part in the middle. Oh, it also doesn't work. So let's, uh, uh, instead of adding the loop cut, let's just uh, ink set. And then we should be able to add a loop cut in the middle. So just add some subdivision so that it can be deformed properly with our plane later. Next, we're just going to reuse the node tree that we have built earlier. So let's add a geometry nodes modifier and then select the node tree, which is called a geometry nodes. And immediately it starts work like magic. Okay, we didn't change anything from the node tree, it works. Because by default, this kind of circle is already having a UV map starting from 0, 0, 2, 1, 1. So we did not change anything, it already works. Okay. Uh, in more practical cases, you may want to use the position instead of UV. Because it's possible that your object is not having the same UV space. Okay. So in this case, we're just going to change this node tree a little bit. So instead of using UV map, we are going to use the position. Here, if we directly plug this position into the sample UV, then you will find the result is not expected. Uh, this is because the coordinate of position is not in the range of 0, 0, 2, 1, 1. So they are not corresponding to each other, to UV space. Okay. Uh, because some of the position even goes to the negative range. In real-world practice, uh, if you want to make a procedure, you can take a bounding box and we can map range the vector, uh, the minimum and the maximum, to 0, 0, and 1, 1, so that you can make everything more procedural. Uh, let's actually just try this, and you can see it works perfectly fine immediately. Uh, in this particular case, you can also make that a little bit of menu. Let's shrink it and take that to this uh, range of 0, 0, and 1, 1. Let's plug the position to sample UV. Then you can see it's still working as long as you map it a little bit correctly. But basically, this is kind of idea. Okay. Our last topic today is to discuss how to add some thickness. To our deformed geometry or what if my object already has some thickness okay so in this particular case if we're working with this circle i would really suggest to add a solidify modify afterwards i assume it'll probably improve the performance as well but i've never really tested that so it's just a hypothesis whichever way you do feel welcome but in other cases, what if I'm working with a Suzanne monkey? It already has a common kind of thickness, but if I add a geometry node tree, then it will immediately be crushed into the plane because UV space or UV map 
is a 2D space. It does not consider the thickness. Okay, so how are we gonna to resolve this kind of issue? Recover the original geometry. The first thing we're going to do is to use actually this map range position so that even if we just uh, modify the geometry, it will just uh, be mapped correctly in this 0 to 1 range. Okay, the next thing is just uh, to recover the thickness based on normal of our plane. How do we get the normal on our sample the coordinate? We just add a new sample UV surface. But this time, instead of taking the position attribute, I'm going to use the normal attribute. So now we get actually a normal. And we can multiply this normal and add that into the offset. Uh, it does not really work at this moment because there are several things that we need to consider. Is how to distinguish from point to point. Previously, we already have a map range. We can separate x, y, z, and then plug the z into the scale. Then we have kind of our result back. Now, the monkey does not really look like uh, any good geometry because we are remapping the z-axis to anything to 0 to 1. It's probably not the actual scale originally. So how can we actually fix that? We're going to basically just take the maximum and we subtract the minimum and we multiply, multiply this subtraction to correct the scale. Then we recover the real height of our geometry. It still looks kind of very, very weird. It's simply because this deformation by itself is kind of weird. But if you recover the plane as a plane, then you realize, oh, it's actually perfectly fine. It's a real monkey. If you do not do this step, then it will just be crushed to nothing because it's not reflecting the actual skill from the maximum and the minimum. So basically that's it. Um, in the future tutorial, we're going to talk about the real cases and uh, this is this is not a lot of nodes, but if you have to do this kind of a setup every time, it's still a lot of there are still a lot of issues. So that's why I'm making a preset, which is called uh, Math UV Space, which is basically doing everything that we have discussed so far, plus many other things. For example, uh, the middle level to really change that. But we're going to discuss that uh, in the future. If you do not want to use the preset, then this amount of nodes is probably the standard method that we are going to use in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.